Hey guys, Matt here with Built Right Industries. Today I'm going to show you a little bit about how we recommend you mount a high lift jack in your uh, Ford F-150 or Raptor. Uh, we made a couple of different recommendations to our bedside rack customers over the course of the last year or so. Uh, we've kind of narrowed in on what we think is going to be good um, and then hopefully we're going to design and produce something that we think will kind of be ideal for most people. So uh, let's take a look. All right, so what we're looking at here is a standard length um, high lift jack. I'll see if I can post uh, an actual link in um, part number in the description so you know exactly what we're looking at looking at um, but I've got this mounted right now with um, some quick fist original clamps uh, both on the on the uh, the back and the front um, just around the I-beam here and that's a really nice way to mount it the handle kind of sits right here in this in the like, little rubber thing there and doesn't move around a lot um, and then you can see it's mounted using our riser mounts um, so those mounts were designed with specifically this application in mind in order to set the quick fist away from the bedside rack just enough to provide clearance. Now clearance isn't an issue on this end, but if we look down at the other end here, let's see if I can zoom in. Um, down at the other end, you've got kind of the foot of the jack and that requires more clearance from the bedside. So anyway, I've got these, these are rubber mounts. They've, uh, they've been on my truck here for about 10,000 miles. Uh, a lot of on-road driving, Good amount of off-road, a lot of bumpy stuff in and out of parking lots and, and, and off-road, of course, um, with no issues. Now, one of the things that makes me a little bit uncomfortable is I don't like how strained these um, rubber mounts look. Uh, again, they haven't failed or caused any issues, but that makes me a little bit uncomfortable. I'd love to see this mount come further around if it were going to continue using a rubber mount. Um, but I recently had a customer use this product, uh, 4 by rack uh, it looks like it's manufactured by High Lift, so I'm not sure if 4 by rack is just the product name or maybe a different smaller brand. Anyway, this is kind of a basic sheet metal part. Now, it's a little bit crude uh, as far as fit and finish goes, but it certainly looks like it does the trick. It uses a carriage bolt from the bottom here um, that's nicely dr drilled for a pin. So you'd, uh, you'd mount these to the racks, and they do actually uh, mount up okay to our racks. And then you would put this through one of the holes there and then they've got a cap that goes over the top and then a wing nut and then I do like the hole drilled through here so that you can put a pin in there to kind of lock it in um, for some additional uh, security uh, it would be nice if there was a way to lock the um, high lift jack to this you know if this was like big enough for example to put a padlock through or something um, and maybe it is if you had a really tiny padlock. Um, but so that's something that we'll consider. The issue with this is that it's got a huge footprint. You can see from, from uh, outside to outside of these two slots is about six inches. Um, I think this was originally designed like 20 years ago to fit uh, the front of a Jeep bumper. Um, and so obviously it probably does that really well. But it's going to take up a lot of real estate on our panels. Um, and I think it also sets the jack a little bit further from the panel than is needed. So what I'm going to do is sketch something up that's going to provide a similar type mounting. I mean, this is kind of what you would arrive at in order to mount a jack like this, no matter how you slice it. But um, I'm going to see about designing something that we can make that might uh, be a little bit more low profile and, uh, and fit our customers' needs a little bit better. So uh, let's go sit down and do that. All right, so I didn't want to bore you with the whole process, but it's pretty basic. You can see... Um, I originally mo modeled something that sort of had these flanges coming out in the direct in the outside directions um, in order to be four inches on center. And then I kind of dropped into our model and looked at it and I realized we might actually be able to get away with having these flanges come um, bend to the inside in order to not occupy more space on our racks. And then um, it also means that the fasteners and stuff that are that are used here are not going to be catching on anything. If you've got other things uh, hanging on there or you're doing any reaching. Um, so my hope is that what we can do is push a carriage bolt up through the back of the rack so the rack will hold onto the carriage bolt and then we can just put a nut and uh, and washer in here. It might be a little tight for a wrench but we're that's what we're going to kind of try and find out. So what I've done here is I've added let's see I've added some ribs here um, and now these would not be in the production piece but I just modeled them in to provide some support so that we could go ahead and 3D print um, a couple of prototypes and hopefully they'll be burly enough, um, even if we just print them in PLA, 
to um, support the jack. Probably not for driving, although we'll see. Um, but at least to get it mocked up and make sure that it fits nicely. So we're going to go ahead and print this. And I'll print a couple of them, and then we'll go fit them up to the truck. All right, so from that model that we were looking at, I exported an STL file, which is a pretty standard file that's used by 3D printers. Um, and then I use a, a program called Slicer to generate the 3D printed, um, it's called G-code, but the code that the printer is going to use to create the model. And so what you see is the yellow is the outside. The red is sort of the... Uh, the filling, um, which is not necessarily solid in a 3D printed part like this. You can see if I can, if I'm able to zoom in here, the inside is kind of filled with a honeycomb pattern um, just because uh, we don't need the strength that solid would provide. Solid can also uh, impact the models, uh, the 3D printed parts ability to dry, or excuse me, um, uh, cool down and become um, more solid for us without warping around and stuff. So, and then the green is support material. Um, just with my printer setup, I put down, it's called a raft, uh, which is two layers on the bottom just to help. Cause otherwise we're just trying to stick this thin edge, um, get that to stick to the printer table, which is sometimes a little bit of a challenge. Uh, but if I put down the raft here, the raft is bigger and then the, uh, the printed material sticks to itself pretty well. So it'll stick to this raft. And then over here we've got support material um, so that, you know, this, this thing prints in layers and I can kind of show you, it'll start way down here and then it prints up. Um, so we'll get to that rib, for example, <clears throat> up here, it's printing this support material so that when we get to this next layer and it tries to print essentially horizontally, there's a little bit of something to catch that and prevent it from drooping way down. So this is going to take a little bit longer, but it's going to give us um, a more complete part. So let's go ahead and print this. This print will probably take three or four hours. Um, we'll let it run and then we will check it out. All right. So we just finished printing. Uh, it took just over four hours and 20 minutes. Um, this is a Prusa i3 Mark II. Um, definitely not the fanciest 3D printer you can get, but it's got a, it's a great little, um, it's a great little machine. I actually, you can buy it in a kit and then build it. Uh, yourself and so that's what I did I kind of like to tinker and it also means that you know how to fix it if and when it stops working the way you need it to work so you can see it printed it'd be kind of cool if it printed in the colors um, there are 3d printers that'll do that uh, so that we can see the difference between the support material and stuff but I'm going to try and wrench this off the table the build platform here and it's stuck on there pretty good which is not uh, which is not a bad thing all right, we got it off. See, it's a little bit violent because that support material makes some noise, but um, everything looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do is uh, pull off the support material and kind of clean up the part a little bit. And then we will go ahead and uh, print another one as long as this one looks good and get it out on the truck for a test fit. All right, so we've got our 3D printed parts now. I'm just going to grab some hardware that I think will be useful in getting these mounted up. Each of the two brackets will need four bolts. These are a quarter 20, uh, 5 8 inch length, which is a common size that we use. Um, I'll use some washers. I don't need. Don't know if I'm going to need washers. Um, and then, oh, you know what? Actually, these are uh, just quarter 20 flanged bolts. What I've got over here is quarter 20 carriage bolts. So the slots in a quarter 20 carriage bolt will actually sit really nicely in the bedside rack. So we'll use these. And then um, for, a, for a real installation, I would use these nylon locking nuts. Um, but I've got some uh, flange nuts that'll kind of go on and off a little easier just for the sake of test fitting quickly. So uh, this is the harder the high lift sends. We'll probably use, we'll reuse their uh, wing nut there. Um, all right, so let's get these fitted up. All right, <clears throat> these are the uh, flange nuts I was talking about. So these won't be quite as uh, robust in an actual installation, but for the sake of test fitting these, they're gonna go on really quickly and easily, and that saves both of us time. Man, for, okay, I'm just, sidebar, it's great to have a little thing like this. Um, that's just full of miscellaneous hardware. We use a lot of quarter 20 hardware and it's just super nice to have different bolts, different lengths, um, nuts, different types of washers, nuts, that sort of thing. Um, 
These Stanley cases are pretty slick. <clears throat> you can stack them together. So like we've got some smaller miscellaneous stuff on this side. Um, and I've got a few other sets just like this of 3 8 hardware, 5 16 sets sort of thing. So, um, man, this is a sweet way to spend like 50 bucks and just have, uh, have what you need without running to the hardware store. So, all right. I spoiled the surprise a little bit, but here are the printed parts. So this part turned out really nice. Both, both of them printed flawlessly, which is always a little bit of a challenge sometimes with a 3D printer. Um, but you see, I've got, we've got our hole there for the carriage bolt. Um, I've been printing recently with this clear, clear stuff. Um, it's kind of cool. You can see that, uh, inside sort of support material, um, structure through the outer two layers here. So, um, we will take these. So this, this is the cap that high lift uses on theirs. Um, what I, what I mean when it's a little crude is like, it started as a square piece of material, but then it was bent a little bit off. Um, so the sides aren't really flat, which is sort of strange. Um, and here's the, here's the other bracket with the carriage bolt pushed through it. So, uh, let's go get these bolted up and see how the jack fits. The first thing I'm going to do is remove the, uh, high lift jack and the current riser mounts and quick fist clamps. Uh, I won't bore you with that. So we'll zip through it and skip to the next part. All right. So we've got our um first installation point here and now i'm not going to be really picky about where i put this um just because we're probably going to move it around but i know i want it somewhere you know right here probably butt it up just about as close as i can to the actual mounting points of the bedside racks just because i know that these are this is sort of the most sturdy area of the panel is right here so what we're going to do is um the profile of this is not exactly uh, symmetrical we're wanting to lock it in up here and then the, the weight of this is going to push the bottom of the bracket back into the panel uh, but we're still going to secure it right here so you probably could flip it uh, I'm going to prefer this orientation um, uh, to start with flipping it would raise the jack up a little bit but it doesn't make a lot of difference so we'll go ahead and try it this way That's pretty slick. Using the carriage bolts from the back of the panel is nice because you don't have to worry then about um, holding the back of the bracket, or like, excuse me, the back of the bolt with the tool. The panel will do that. So, all right, so we've got this on there. I'm gonna take you off the tripod here. We can look around. We've got that on there with our two bolts. Um, it looks really great, actually. Of course it fits, which is not much of a surprise because we use it all in CAD, but it's always nice to see. Um, I think for the purpose of testing, yeah, I might put, I'll put these other two bolts in there just to be safe. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I got those in there. I'm gonna go ahead and snug them up just a little bit. We don't want to crush the 3D printed piece here, but it's actually pretty durable. Part of the reason I really like using these 3D printed parts, um, as opposed to just trusting a CAD model, is that it allows you to do stuff like this, which is to make sure that the, uh, the tool that you're using uh, is able to get onto the fasteners. Uh, you know, like up here is a little tight. This is the kind of thing where if this angle was bent too much further, you might have a hard time getting this wrench on there and you may not know it until you've actually got production parts that you have plenty of clearance to get a wrench over this. So um, just kind of one, one reason that our process is the way that it is. So, all right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and zip through the front mount um, now that we know this actually bolts up and uh, then we can test fit the jack. All right, so that was kind of a good example, uh, or a good demonstration rather, of how easy those uh, riser mounts are to work on with these panels. So we've got that riser mount off. One thing you'll notice about my panels here that are a little bit different than yours is, well, actually two things. The first is that the edge of these um, little rectangles and stuff have little teeth. The reason for that is early on when we were manufacturing or prototyping these, we were using stock tooling that would create a feature like this 
uh, in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hits, and it created these little teeth here. Um, so we actually uh, had tooling made that was the, the exact size and shape of each of these features to uh, prevent the teeth. The second thing is that I sort of rather crudely trimmed this to make space for my bed rack clamp here. So yours will have um, the two additional rectangular features here, but that doesn't really matter for the, for the sake of moving forward with this. So now we'll go ahead and we'll install our new 3D printed prototype. Something like this. Again, not really exactly sure where we need it, but I wanna get it in place here and we will adjust from there. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and snug these ones up just the same. All right, so I've got the jack here um, and I'm kind of just eyeballing about where we're gonna land to make sure that we're landing uh, in an area where the bolt has access to the I-beam versus uh, the mechanism here. Um, and it occurs to me that we're kind of constrained by the location of these slots in the I-beam. So um, I left this bracket bolted in, but I loosened this one up so that we've got a little bit of side to side and can adjust as needed in order to fit into these holes. So now what I'm gonna do is lift the jack up there and hope that these brackets will support it. And then we'll be putting one of these brackets on top. I was I was gonna print these and just thought, eh, we'll just we'll just reuse these for the sake of prototyping. Um, so let's give it a shot. We nailed it. All right, so as you can see, we've got these. I, I should go back and uh, retighten these down, so I think I'll do that uh, before, but those slip on there really nicely. And then we've got some wing nuts somewhere. Here we are. Um, that'll go on here to lock it down. And then my guess is that hole in the bolt is drilled such that when this is really cinched down, there you go, you would put a pin or a little lock through here in order to lock it in place. So uh, I'm gonna cinch down this mount a little bit and, uh, and then we can kind of further evaluate what we got going on here. Okay, so I'm really happy with how this turned out. Um, lift up the handle here so we can get a little bit better look. Um, you see we've got the bracket there and then the I-beam here. The only thing that would differ really fitment-wise uh, in a production model is that on the bracket here, let's see if I can get a view. Um, in order to keep that carriage bolt in place, there is a lock washer and then a jam nut. <clears throat> and because cinching down that lock washer and jam nut would crush this 3D printed model, uh, I haven't done that. So that's gonna get us about an eighth of an inch closer to the bracket. Um, but then you've got this uh, smaller bracket here with a wing nut. So this is basically cinching it down to that jam nut, which is fine. Um, man, I really like everything about this. It's gonna be really solid. Um, as far as clearance from the panel, we've got the foot over here. Again, we'll probably lose about an eighth inch there, but there's still plenty of clearance there. Um, one of my concerns was, was, uh, was this kind of uh, feature of the jack and that's not going to cause any problems, not even close. Um, you know, we could go a little bit higher. I can modify the bracket design so that it um, kicks up a little bit more or, or is straight out versus the um, little bit of pitch that it has right now. But I think I kind of like the idea of keeping this lower. It gives you plenty of clearance if you've got, um, for example, a bedrack like I've got here or a different tonneau cover, that sort of thing. So, man, I might really roll with this the way that it is. Uh, one option would be to install this bracket on this side of the panel here. And then and then you'd be able to install this bracket back here and kind of tuck the jack away a little bit more. Um, but we do want to be careful about that feature in the bed that will kind of protrude. So maybe I'll measure that up and make sure that we're clear of that with the foot of the jack. Um, but besides that, this might be a, 
these might be really close to the production that you, models that you see so uh, keep an eye out for those let me know if you guys have comments or questions or concerns and we'll go from there uh, if you guys like videos like this of just kind of me putzing around with prototypes and ideas and stuff uh, let me know in the comments or subscribe and we'll uh we'll keep doing it or we'll stop if it's terrible so uh have a good one guys <laughs>